Now, listen, I haven't heard back from Renee here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to presume she's on, so I'm going to do a quick raw report here. There's only a few things to talk about. We had uh, Vinci and Kaiser versus Elf Academy, and uh, Vinci and Kaiser won because Kaiser uh, got the pin after Vinci grabbed Otis's leg. So Otis uh, got pinned, and Vinci is on probation, but he saved the day here, so he earned himself a little more time. Grabbed his hawk. They had a big, big announcement of the signing of Jade Cargill. I mean, are we going to do this again? Bros, she's getting a massive push when she ends up on the main roster. Do not fool yourself. As long as they don't give her the Sin Cara trampoline, she should be okay. Bronson Reed and uh, Cedric Alexander. So uh, no one cared. They don't believe Cedric has any chance. He's never on TV. So Bronson uh, beat him quickly, and that was that. The Ciampa and Gunther contract signing. Ended with uh, Ciampa challenging him for tonight, which was kind of funny because uh, he was making this big deal about how next week, next week, next week, my family, my 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 wife, my child, Willow of Willow's Bell fame, they're all going to be there. And then he goes, you know what? Let's do it tonight. I thought, man, poor Willow. So uh, they did it tonight, which led to the reuniting of DIY. We had Ivar beating Xavier. Or actually, Xavier beat Ivar, which made me sad because they're 50 50 Ivar. And, man, this dude looked so good last week and this week. He is a monster. And I, I was upset they had to beat the guy, but that's what they do, so whatever. It was not as good as the Kofi match, but it was a fun match. He got to be a monster afterwards. Then we had the funniest freaking thing in years. <laughs> years. So Seth is doing a promo in the ring. To hype up their uh, their Falls Count Anywhere match. And and Michael Cole had the greatest moment of his career. When uh, Seth is out there being an absolute idiot. And Michael Cole just calmly says, Seth, what are you doing? And so then Seth has to get all serious and take off his stupid sunglasses and all. So Nakamura appears on the big screen. And... Uh, and first off, there were there, there there were two things that happened here. First, Nakamura starts doing his recap in Japanese. So they put these subtitles on the Titantron so that you can see what he's saying. But this idiot director keeps cutting to Seth. So it's like, we don't know what he's saying because they keep having to get a reaction shot. So then, the actual Nakamura shows up in the ring. And he attacks Seth Rollins, and he lays him out. So then, the pre-tape is aware that he has been laid out, and the pre-tape begins to count Seth down. <laughs> okay? Somehow this pre-tape not only knew exactly what Nakamura would attack, but how long it would take to lay out Seth, and it knew enough to count. And not only that, when Seth gets up at 7, the pre-tape knows to stop counting. So then, if this isn't preposterous enough, Nakamura lays him out again. And once again, this living, sentient pre-tape knows now I must count again. And the pre-tape starts counting. Well, man, Seth gets to his feet again, and the pre-tape stops counting again. I was like, what am I watching? Told you, AI How could I that possibly suspend my disbelief? This is ridiculous. And then Seth gets laid out again, and this time at least Nakamura the human counted. And then Seth is dead. <laughs> but then it's like the whole thing is so stupid because I'm supposed to pay money to watch a last man standing match, and all Nakamura did was hit the guy a few times and he can't get up by 10? How was that supposed to make me want to see this match? I, don't I know people are making this. fun of this segment and going, this is why I don't watch WWE. This is why you should watch this segment. <laughs> this is something to see. I don't want you comparing this to WCW, though, just because... Dude, Undertaker, was... like, a warrior would be looking in the mirror... <laughs> 
It just laughing. Is, the only reason that this is not WCW is because they would have aired it in such a way where the countdown would have been off. And that would have been even more screwed up. So this, you're supposed to, you know, just pretend, I guess, that yes. Preposterous. The, the, the Do you hear me? The knows what it is, but. This was preposterous. I know. It I was know. ridiculous. You know what it was? It was cockamamie. Cockamamie. Back in a moment. Perhaps with Renee. Perhaps not. Wrestling Observer Live. They say, I got good news and I got bad news. Hmm. Should we good do the news. bad news first? Well, I guess, I guess we have to, because otherwise we can't really say the good news. That's true. And the bad news is Renee is not on today. She's still uh, in the chair. Yeah. But the good news hmm. is that she has been booked for Thursday. Ooh. Yeah. 320 Eastern. 30 minutes with Renee. Now, do you have a doctor's or a dentist appointment? I do not have a dentist appointment, but I have to okay. put my new inserts in, ironically, on Thursday. Or hmm. coincidentally, I believe is the proper term. Yes. But you know the other good news is I can address this message here from Sandman31 in the chat. <laughs> he says, yes, it's bad, but are you ready for this? Yes. I see it as they stop the tape, go back to live, and go back to another clip of Nakamura saying the count, and then stopping when he gets up, and production re-looping and playing it again by this Naka's orders beforehand. Still very horrible, but I don't think the logic was that this would pre-tape, knew the correct time Seth be attacked and went to Stark County. So you're telling me. This is not a choose-your-own-adventure. You're telling me that Shinsuke Nakamura went to the production crew, and he said, I want you to film an interview with me. And at some point during the interview, I'm going to stop talking. And then I want you to film me counting to ten. Because I'm going to slide in and attack Seth Rollins at Raw. And I'm going to beat him down. And when he's down, I want you to play the video of me counting. And make sure that you stop it when he gets up. Reloop it so when I attack him again, you can... And we'll keep doing that till he stays down. But at some point, I'm going to do the counting. So make sure you're aware that I'm doing the counting so you don't do the counting at the same time. They're not just going to say, why don't you count the whole time, you numbskull? This is way too much trouble. That's more ridiculous than the pre-tape being living, in my opinion. Well, if we're going to try to retro this, I know how I can make this work. Because Shinsuke Nakamura has been such a obnoxious heel, if you actually had managers which meant anything, you could have had the manager do this they set it up ahead of time the announcers can roll their eyes what are these idiots doing and he could be in the truck making kevin dunn or whatever it is play the tape and haha and they again they they do this at the extreme expense of seth rollins but you would need to have another crony for that unlike this where again it just happened and you know this person here says the twin brother makes more sense hmm was it UG uh, 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 Yoda Suji that has the twin brother? Yes. I was so angry when I heard that. Why? Because I don't remember the whole storyline that I had, but when I was in the YWF, I, I always hoped that I could find someone with a twin because I had a character in my mind called the clone. And, uh, it necessitated having a secret twin brother so that, like, you would do the gimmick where, you know, they're, 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 you know, maybe a second guy shows up and then the first guy says it's not him, it's actually his clone. And you're like, what are you talking about? You have a clone? And then, you know, later it would come out that he actually had made a clone because you would actually have the two guys that had to build to that. But then I wanted to actually really find triplets because then there had to be a third guy because he's cloning himself. Anyway, I had a whole storyline. The YWF just... was one step away from a traveling carnival. It really was. Oh, man. You should have seen what we came up with for the YWF. <laughs> it was something else. Mm. Anyway, I guess we could talk more about Raw and then move on. Hey, if you got questions, mailbag. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, 425-780-7566. Text them to me. 425-780-7566. We'll do a live Q&A because we got some time here. Whatever's on yeah. your mind, I'd be happy to answer. So then we had uh, Chelsea versus Tegan. Tegan beat her in like a minute. Chelsea, of course, won half of the tag team champions. I now demand that uh, 
Tegan and and uh, Natty team up and win the tag team titles. Oh no! So at least we have people that will actually wrestle for the titles and not this stupid storyline. Dave always defends it. It's a storyline. Well, I know that, but what, it sucks. What makes you think they're going to defend the titles if they put them on them? I mean, how many title defenses have they had with these women's tag team titles? Taking it back to whenever it was that Mercedes and Trinity dropped them. Well, you know, you could actually just have people defend them. That is yeah. possible. I thought they were going they to could have, have this, matches. They were going to have this push in NXT with the, all these women's tag teams that they ended up dropping. This is like the men's tag team division, though, where at least they have something that goes around with the, the you know, they're part of a storyline in the men's division. But for the most part, tag team wrestling means... I'm not saying as little right now as it ever has, but they're certainly not utilizing those players to their best potential or putting people together. I thought Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, that was something that I was lobbying for, and they went ahead and did it. Not that they listened to me, but like that's a great example of two guys who have weaknesses and strengths that counterbalance each other and they're probably better off together. Again, get more of these teams feuding with each other and make it matter. Then we had a Drew McIntyre promo that ended up, it was weird, Miz got involved, and this led to uh, Drew versus Miz, which uh, Drew won. And here is the story, okay? I actually like this Drew McIntyre character. So the story is that Drew is very upset that Jey Uso has come to Raw, and he is very upset that all of these babyfaces have just forgiven Jey Uso for all of these horrible things that he did in the bloodline. He thinks it's a stupid idea to just forgive this guy. And that why are people forgetting all of these horrible things that the guy did? And he's very upset about this. So his gimmick now is that, you know, he's going to, he's now he's going to start doing heelish things. For example, here, Miz removed a turnbuckle pad and the ref caught him. Drew ends up hitting his moves and he goes for the Claymore. But then he changes his mind. And instead of winning clean, he gets his sword, which, of course, the referee takes away because you can't stab a guy, apparently. You can swing it at him. You can even jab him with it, but if he's wearing chain mail and it doesn't hurt, that's okay. But anyway, the guy takes the sword away from him. And then he rams Miz's head into the buckle like a heel and pins him. And then he grabs the mic afterwards and he says, you know... I'm not the same guy I was 30 seconds ago. I am sorry for my actions. And hey, I'm forgiven. And he walks to the back. Mm. I like this character. It's I like funny. this guy. It's funny that you say that, Brian. It's funny that you like that character. But yet you hate Nick Wayne. Really, for the same thing. I hope this storyline ends with Drew coming under the turtleneck of Christian and taking him on as a father figure as well, because he is justified just in the same way that Nick Wayne is, because all of a sudden we forget about all the trauma that this guy caused, all the title matches that he made me lose. It's amazing that you like this character, but then have some sort of Nick wouldn't for even Nick Wayne. be in AW without Darby. Darby's the one that showed up at Defy and gave him a contract when he was 16 years old. I thought old. you told me that he wouldn't be there if it wasn't for you. I have never said that. Not one time have I ever taken any credit for Nick Wayne. Except that one time in the... Anyway. Trick Williams did a promo. He's uh, going to NXT to defend that title against Dom, and all of the Judgment Day is heading there. And then the uh, main event was Gunther and Ciampa for the Intercontinental title. As we noted earlier, excellent match. Double bomb, sleeper finish. And then Imperium is stomping down Ciampa. Gunther heads to the back. Johnny Gargano's music hits. He sprints to the ring. They're about to hit that big double team. It goes off the air. As Butch would say, that was the end of the show. Smackdown last week, or was it the week before that had all those transmission issues at the end there? Smackdown? Yeah. Remember, did you have that issue on YouTube TV? I definitely did, and I heard other people did on cable, where this is where John Cena was, uh, I think he may, was getting beaten down, and L.A. Knight came out. I, I didn't there, see SmackDown. 
Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, there were issues at the end of that, too. So, so. they had two in a row? Yeah. Man. Unhappy ending. If AEW had AW two shows happens. in a row where they went off the air due to a timing issue at the wrong time, boy, would I be hearing about that over and over again. Bet you'd get a Radio silence after this one I can't help but notice. Mm-hmm. Won't mention any names. Mm-hmm. Huh. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.